Today we are going to talk about protein electrophoresis. I don't know if you have ever come across this investigation or not, uh, but this is a very peculiar investigation and in which uh, what we do is that we take a sample of the blood and you know blood also contains different types of proteins in the serum part and that uh, a current is then passed through this blood and based on the molecular weight of different proteins they like um, either go towards the anode side and cathode side so then this is plotted on a filter paper as in a graph is created which we call as protein electrophoresis normally protein electrophoresis is ordered when you are suspecting gammopathies which are basically problems in the gamma proteins or sometimes if you find out for one reason or the other reason that the serum proteins are either elevated or they are decreased sometimes in certain form of kidney disorders liver disorders and even in neurological disorders so in all these things protein electrophoresis is done to aid in the diagnosis so let's dive in and further talk about how do we interpret this protein electrophoresis so normally if you look at the protein electrophoresis graph you would see that it mimics your face in this peculiar manner so the i don't know if it, it might be showing you the mirror image but uh, you just have to flip it so let me put it this way so the first spike is your um, albumin level so albumin is one of the major components of your plasma protein so the first spike is actually your serum albumin levels then you have got like three small humps so the first one is the alpha 1 protein then you've got the alpha 2 protein then you've got the beta protein so these are very small humps which are almost more or less similar in terms of their height and then there is a slightly bigger and broader hump which is for the gamma proteins so this is how you would see a normal protein like phases first sharp spike is of albumin then three small humps so going from this side to the other side alpha 1 alpha 2 beta and then gamma so these are the different proteins or globulins as we call them so this is how you would normally uh, see a protein electrophoresis so based on the different disorders these you know humps can go up and down so let's talk about the first one albumin we we all know i would come to the albumin uh, problems in some other uh, lecture for the time being we'll be talking about these other like rare proteins the alpha 1 alpha 2 beta and the gamma globulins so the first one is alpha 1 proteins or alpha 1 globulins <coughs> excuse me now the alpha 1 if you think what comes into your mind alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency now alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency is a peculiar type of a genetic disorder in children in which there is a deficiency of this alpha 1 um, protein or alpha 1 um, uh, antitrypsin uh, uh, protein and that leads to chronic uh, liver disease chronic lung disease there are emphysematous changes in the uh, lung tissue and uh, the liver goes into cirrhosis nevertheless because it's alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency so if you see that this alpha 1 hump is actually flattened there's no alpha 1 hump basically you might be dealing with alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency which is a genetic disorder of children but if you see this bit of the protein or the electrophoresis is going a bit up so if there is a increase in the height of this hump it means Delta alpha 1 antitrypsin levels are elevated and alpha 1 antitrypsin is also an uh, acute phase reactant so in inflammatory conditions you would see a rise in the hump of the alpha 1 protein part in this electrophoresis so an increase means inflammation a decrease means alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency now moving on towards the other hump and that is the alpha 2 now alpha 2 proteins actually are your haptoglobulin your ceruloplasmin which you know actually um, is a very important component in Wilson disease as well and the alpha 2 macroglobulin so three things ceruloplasmin haptoglobulin and alpha 2 macroglobulin these are part of your alpha 2 proteins or alpha 2 globulins now if they are increased normally they are increased in what we call as inflammation so alpha 1 and alpha 2 both can be increased in inflammatory conditions so let's say if there is some form of chronic inflammation going on you might see that the protein electrophoresis shows a hump in alpha 1 as well as alpha 2 parts of the protein electrophoresis so like for example in this um a diagram on the side if you look at this side you can see that there are humps on the alpha 1 and the alpha 2 bits of this protein electrophoresis and that means that this is an inflammatory condition so there is some form of acute inflammation going on 
Then coming to the third hump, next to the alpha 1 and alpha 2, and that is the beta region or the beta globulins. Now, beta globulins are again further subdivided into beta 1 and beta 2, but usually on the protein electrophoresis, we just take as the beta hump. Now, what are your beta um, uh, globulins? Your beta 1 is actually transferrin, and transferrin, you know, is the transport to protein for oiron, while the B2 component of the beta globulins, that is actually your beta lipoprotein, LDL beta lipoprotein. So if you look at this, um, uh, this, this graph over here, uh, especially the one in the red, you will see that the albumin level or the albumin hemp is slightly reduced as compared to the normal one. The normal one gives one at the top and the other one is given at the bottom. So as compared to the normal protein electrophoresis pattern, you can see that the one which is given on the lower side has got decrease in albumin level because the albumin spike is low uh, the alpha-1 spike seems more or less normal, but then you can see the alpha-2 spike and the beta globulin spikes are elevated. So they've got me. So what do you think uh, can like, you know, sort of um, uh, explain this thing? Decrease in albumin and an increase, which you call it a compensatory increase in the alpha-2 and beta globulins. Think on that. And that, yeah, you were very right if you have uh, guessed correctly, that is nephrotic syndrome, okay? So in nephrotic syndrome, what happens because there is hypoalbuminemia because the albumin, uh, as a big like protein is being filtered out in the kidneys, the body tries to compensate it by producing the alpha-2 and the beta globulin. So the liver actually increases the production of those proteins. So that's why you find it a bit higher on this uh, protein electrophoresis uh, graph. And with that, in nephrotic syndrome, you would know that it's not only hypoalbuminemia, but there is a nephrotic range proteinuria as well. There is edema and uh, there is hyperlipidemia as well. And this hyperlipidemia is because of this, like, you know, increase in the uh, lipoproteins. So basically, there is this loss of albumin, which leads to compensatory increase in the alpha-2 and the beta lipoprotein. So that's uh, what you would find in a case of nephrotic syndrome. Then... If you look at this uh, protein electrophoresis, so this was a young adult who uh, actually had developed anemia over a prolonged period of time and has also been complaining of uh, bone pain. So obviously you're thinking some form of cancer and uh, well, one thing that comes into my mind is this myeloma. So if you look at this graph, you can see a spike in the albumin levels and then you've got these uh, small humps. But if you look at the small humps, you see that uh, the alpha-2 is slightly greater than the uh, alpha-1. There's a slight increase in the uh, beta hump. But then you see that there's a sort of a, like a, a bridging between the beta and the uh, gamma globulin. So the question is, person with anemia and uh, with anemia, there is uh, bone pain. So what is the relationship between these things? And the relationship between these things is that basically this is oil deficiency anemia. So in oil deficiency anemia, you know, the transferrin levels, transferrin, which is a transport protein for um, oiron, what happens? That actually increases. So when that transferrin increases, so what happens? You get this beta-1 spike on the protein electrophoresis. So this basically is not multiple myeloma because why? Why is this not multiple myeloma? Because we are not seeing any increase in the spike on the gamma globulin side. The gamma globulin side is almost flat, so this is not myeloma. Or rather you see a spike in the beta section of the beta globulin so this is basically a increase in transferrin levels and this anemia is basically oil deficiency anemia which is causing this increase in transferrin and hence this uh, picture of the uh, plasma protein electrophoresis moving on this type of uh, protein electrophoresis in which you see a decrease in albumin but then there is some increase in the uh, gamma um, globulins and some increase in the beta one as well with some bridging is actually indicative of cirrhosis liver because in cirrhosis liver liver is not able to form uh, albumin so the albumin levels relatively go down but at the same time the uh, what happens is that there is a compensatory increase in uh, the gamma globulin levels so go, they, they, well i mean i'm not sure about the exact pathophysiology why this happens but they say with cirrhosis there might be some form of portal hypertension and the gut antigens they usually bypass that and they directly receive, go into the bloodstream and maybe present it to cells and then it leads to uh, the extra uh, hepatic uh, production of these gamma glo uh, globulins and um, 
that leads to a bit of increase in that. So in cirrhosis, you will get a decrease in the albumin levels and a little bit of increase in the uh, gamma globulin levels. And that is actually what you see in a case who has got liver cirrhosis. Last but not the least, then if you have got a spike at the very end, that is the gamma protein levels, that's obviously what we call as a multiple myeloma. Uh, they, they can also be detected in the urine as well as the form of Ben Jones protein. The, the usual question is that what sort of gamma globulins are there? Um, again, by, uh, by, I mean, if you go through uh, commonality, usually it's the IgG, IgG and IgA. So IgG gammopathy is more common as compared to IgA. Though we do need to have some more testing like immunofixation testing to see if the what type of immunoglobulins are actually increased when we are talking about um, this uh, increase in the height of the um, gamma globulins band. But most of the time it's the IgG uh, gammopathy uh, followed by IgA gammopathy. So IgG uh, multiple myeloma is more common as compared to IgA1. And if you get a flattened one, like uh, we'll show you this one. Yeah, so if you get a flattened gamma uh, globulin side, you know, of the protein atrophacil, you're dealing basically with hypogammaglobulinemia. Hypogammaglobulinemia means that they are, you are low on the uh, gamma globulin side, and that would require further testing through flow cytometry or like subclassing of the uh, gamma globulins to see whether it's IgG, IgA, uh, IgE or pan gamma globulinemia, but these types of hypogamma globulinemia, children would be presenting with frequent repeated bacterial or viral or a combination of bacterial or viral infections. So in protein electrophoresis, you will get basically a flattening of the gamma globulin part of the uh, this uh, protein electrophoresis pattern. So that is how you interpret the protein electrophoresis. So in a nutshell, again, you should know that the normal uh, protein electrophoresis is actually in the form of this, where there is a normal spike of the albumin followed by three same sized humps, alpha one, alpha two, beta globulin, and then this smaller, but like slightly bigger hump as compared to the C, which is known as the gamma globulin section. So again, if there are increases and decreases in the relevant sections of the alpha one, alpha two, beta or gamma, they can indicate different types of diseases. And if you know these patterns that I have explained in this particular video, it would be easy for you to understand those common conditions, which can present with either increase or decrease in this uh, different types of um, plasma proteins in their respective sections on the protein electrophoresis. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you still uh, think that something is not clear to you, you can ask me your questions in the comment section below. And uh, if you want me to explain um, some more interesting topics to you guys just let me know in the comment section below i'll be more than happy to make further videos for you guys so have have a very good day take care and bye bye